大家好 ，It's great to see you all again here on Growing Up with Chinese. 成长汉语，欢迎收看。Thanks for tuning in. Last time we covered present tense in Chinese, and I hope that you didn't feel like it was too hard. Between 在正在 and 正 we pretty much covered all the present tense bases. Today our topic is past tense, and trust me, it's essentially as easy as present tense, and nowhere near as difficult as English past tense. We'll be learning past tense with the help of Xiaoming's mom and Mike, who finally decided to wake up. Now today's vocabulary will be focusing on morning activities like breakfast and getting ready to go out. So let's check out what's going on. Fanta,你睡醒了 麦克，快吃早饭吧，小明已经吃过了。阿姨，我想吃面包和牛奶。你看。Okay, guys. I know there was quite a bit of new vocabulary in what we just saw, but did you all find it slightly easy to follow based on the context? Now we've got explanations ready, so you'll get it all in no time. And like always, we're going to break it down once and then break it down some more. Okay, Mike, 你快去洗脸吧。这是你的浴巾，洗发液、浴液在卫生间。Mike, why don't you go wash your face? This is your bath towel. Shampoo and body wash are in the bathroom. Now, for the most part, this sentence and its structure are pretty straightforward. We've got a slightly new way of using 在 which we'll get into in just a little while. Mike, 你怎么不穿拖鞋啊 ？Mike, why aren't you wearing slippers? In this part of the dialogue, Xiaoming's mom is telling Mike he should be wearing slippers, not walking around in his bare feet. We have a cultural difference. In many countries, including the states, going barefoot in your house is quite common, no matter what time of year it might be. In China, going barefoot isn't something you see too much of. Now this custom. Can be traced back to the development of traditional Chinese medicine. They say that all the major organs of your body are represented on the bottom of your foot, and so foot massage is quite a common practice here, especially for balancing your body. If your feet get cold, it has the potential to affect your entire body, so slippers and socks are a must. Now, to this day, when people come over to my apartment here and see me barefoot, they will. Always, without fail, tell me to put some socks and slippers on. This is the custom. Mike, you slept well. Hi, good morning. Xiaoming, what? He he's already out playing. Mike, you go wash your face. This is your bath towel. Wash your face and wash your face in the bathroom. Hey, Mike, why don't you wear slippers? 阿姨，我在自己家里就不穿。快吃早饭吧，小明已经吃过了。Hurry up and eat your breakfast. 小明 has already eaten. Ah, this is where past tense comes into play with the use of 已经 already. Now, as a cultural side note, some of you may be wondering why Xiaoming's mom is telling Mike to hurry up and eat breakfast. In China, saying "hurry up" in a context like this isn't said to literally make you hurry. 
It's used the way we might say help yourself in English. It's very polite and it's also very welcoming. I want to eat some bread and drink some milk. Now, remember how I said that in Chinese, they don't have a have equivalent when talking about food and drink. We can say in English, I'd like some bread and milk, or let's have bread and milk. And there's really nothing incorrect with that sentence. Chinese uses the actual specific verb for eating and drinking. So that's why we see the verb eat, chi, and the verb drink, he, in this sentence. 我想吃面包, 喝牛奶. I want to have some bread and drink some milk. 阿姨,我想吃面包, 喝牛奶. 你看,我还特地给你准备了凉牛奶。Okay, everyone, let's check out what we have lined up for today's vocabulary. Before we get into our very exciting radical of the day, let's take a look at our vocabulary list. Xing, wake up, awaken. Xing, xi lian, wash one's face. Xi lian, chuan, wear. Put on clothes. Chuan. He. Drink. To drink. He. Yu jing. Bath towel. Yu jing. Xi fa ye. Shampoo. Xi fa ye. Yu ye. Body wash. Yu ye. Wei sheng jian. Bathroom. Wei sheng jian. Today we're going to take a look at the radical for water. It's in a whole bunch of characters we're looking at today. Now, let's look at the actual character for water, or shui. Shui is written like this. It's pretty, isn't it? It kind of looks like a flowing river. Now, when water turns into a radical, it looks like this. San bian shui, it's called, and it's water drops, or three dots of water. Now, some of the characters in today's vocabulary list that have the water radical are xi, which on its own means to wash, and yu ye. While yu ye is the word for body wash, it's two characters. And when it's split up, they are yu, bathe, and ye, liquid. Now all three of these characters have a direct connection to water in their meaning. So like we've seen in the past, this is another example of a radical that gives meaning to the character it's coupled with. San dian shui, three dots of water. The water radical. Today, we're going to let the agricultural calendar and its associated holidays have a rest and talk about something completely different. Every culture has its wise sayings. Some have been around for thousands of years, and others may have become popular more recently. Many cultures also share similar sayings. In the States, we say, you can't have your cake and eat it too, to mean that not everything is perfect, you can't always get what you want, and just looking at a cake can be fun. In Israel, they say, you can't have your cake and eat it whole. So it's very similar. Now, if you all remember from our very first show, I mentioned that China has over 5,000 years of history. That's a very long time. And also, it's very fertile ground to grow many, many sayings of wisdom. And today, we're going to talk about one of these sayings. It is, 一年之计在于春, 一天之计在于晨. Now don't worry, this isn't something you have to memorize or add to your vocabulary list if you don't want to. Let me give you a basic translation of it. 一年之计在于春, 
What this phrase is saying is that of all the seasons of the year, spring is the most important. It is the planting and cultivating of spring that brings the harvests of summer and fall, which is what people live on throughout the winter. Now the second half of the saying, 一天之计在于晨, essentially means that of all the times of the day, morning is the most important. It's morning that informs what we will be doing all day, what we will accomplish, what goals we may achieve. Now I'm sure you can all see the parallels between spring and morning. And the moral is, if we plan properly in the beginning and lay a good foundation, what comes after will be golden a seize the day kind of message. Okay, it's time to put traditional sayings aside and look at some grammatical sayings. It's time now to discuss some language points. We've already covered le in past shows and discussed how it functions as a marker following an adjective or verb for noting the completion of a change or the completion of an action. If it's completed, then it's in the past, right? Similarly, when le pops up at the end of a sentence, it indicates that something has changed. So le is a big player in the theater of past tense. Now there are some other words that help clarify that something is past. We have them in English too. Let's take a look at yijing or already. Xiaoming yijing chi guo la. Xiaoming has already eaten. The pattern we see here is yi jing dot 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 le. Now the le has to be present because the action or change has already taken place, right? So ta yi jing zou la, he already left. Ta yi jing shi sui la, she's already 10 years old. Now there's another line in today's dialogue that uses yi jing. Ta yi jing chu qu da qiu la. He's already gone out to play ball. Not too hard to grasp, is it? Let's take a look at some other examples. Xiao Ming, 你们什么时候放假? 我们已经放假了,今天是第一天. 喂, 兰兰,你有空吗? 我请你吃披萨,怎么样? 唉。we talked about using zai last class in the context of present tense to be in the action of doing something. Ta zai shui jiao, he is sleeping. In today's context, xi fa ye he yu ye zai wei sheng jian. Zai is used to indicate where a person or thing is. The shampoo and body wash are in the bathroom. So the pattern is something plus zai plus somewhere. Let's look at some examples. Xiao Ming, what are you doing? Here's a simple one. Xiang, to want. Now, incidentally, xiang has another meaning other than to want. It also means to think, but we'll cover that another time. In today's dialogue, Mike says, 我想吃面包喝牛奶. I want to eat bread and drink milk. 哎呀,饿死我了。妈,我想吃饭。才五点多钟,你先吃点饼干吧。Okay, that wraps up tenses for now. You guys made it. Good job. Next time we'll be covering something entirely different. So rest assured, you're all going to get a break from tenses and tension. Everyone take a deep breath and release. Hen hao. Now, do not forget to leave us some feedback, okay? Happy day to all of you. I will see you next time. Jiao. Zai jian.